We had heard that Gloria Steinem was uh, was coming to town. They managed to make contact with uh, Gloria Steinem, tell her about this strike that was going on among these answering service operators, and um, asked her to join the picket line for a day. And it was it was it was really glorious. It's a beautiful day. It was a summer day. The effect of it, of having someone who was well known and who captured some media attention that, and, and thereby brought media attention to their struggle was as exciting as could be. People were so pumped. It was wonderful. It was a wonderful day. What we heard from people because it was what we experienced, what we had experienced on the job. The lack of opportunity to get ahead, being treated like we were sort of less than like we were only capable of doing certain kinds of jobs, knowing that we were being paid lowest on the salary schedule. You know, things don't just happen. You have to make them happen. Uh, Martin Luther King quote about the trajectory of the universe bending toward the arc of justice. And I'm like, no, it doesn't bend toward the arc of justice. We have to make it bend. No one was going to hand us anything. I grew up in Lowell. You know, I came from a family that was a hardworking family. My grandparents um, had worked in the mills. My grandfather uh, had been a roofer. My my mother was uh, had been uh, what they called a practical nurse at that time. And you know, she always talked a lot too about how she was treated at work. And you know, that had an impact on me because I didn't want to see my mother hurt. And I knew, you know, she had a great sense of dignity about the work that she did. And I was the only one to go to college. And I was the first one to go to college, which was like a really, really big deal. But then very quickly came, you know, arose, like by the end of my freshman year, into my sophomore year, really the second wave of the women's movement. And then there was the anti-war movement. And I went to anti-war marches in my freshman year, pulled me in because it was about fights for justice and fights for what was right. And fights for change and it was about activism and that really that really took hold in my in my soul at the labor guild they had a school the school of industrial relations and i took classes there and it changed everything i learned about organized labor i learned about the labor struggles and, and then at the same time, of course, nine to five was come, was growing. This group of women whose voice was not being heard. There's something you can do about it. Everything exploded. The movie was married to a movement. They built their own kind of feminism and it was powerful. I'm not just a secretary, I'm a secretary. And I was called by Karen Nussbaum and she wanted to come and meet with me. It was a very safe place for young activists to learn and grow. You know, there wasn't a union at the time I met Karen. As we got to know each other and I became more active, she told me about nine to five was trying to get a charter from a national union to form a union for office workers. Was invited to join the staff and I jumped at it. I said, yes, absolutely. And we were the original staff, of Local 925. We had desks, we had a typewriter, and that's it at the Boston YWCA. But we talked about the injustices and the discrimination that women faced, faced at work, the shutting off of opportunities that had happened to me at Boston State, knowing that even, you know, if there wasn't, that there wasn't a system in place, that there was a sort of a competition as to who would get paid more. And we had to be quiet about our pay and not tell anybody. The lack of understanding, especially when it came to how women were responsible for their families and, you know, sometimes needed to take sick leave for their families. Pregnancy leave, you couldn't, they, there was no, there was, maternity leave was on the books, but people still suffered a tremendous amount of um, discrimination on the basis of their child, on the basis of having this ability to bear children. We knew we had to bargain about the basics because sick leave itself, people had nothing without a union, nothing. So we were starting from the basics, really. We were 
like an anomaly, not only just in the labor movement, but when we sat across the table from um, employers, when we sat across the table from their, you know, high priced lawyers, it wasn't about we were trying to cause trouble. We were just talking about workers' rights and people having any, a say on the job and a say in their work lives. And anything like that was just an affront to them. It was an affront that we should even, that anybody should question their authority. We were, you know, we faced a lot of oppositions because at that time, what we didn't know what was going on was that there was a huge anti-union uh, industry growing. The first couple of months, first few months that I was doing this job, I'd say the first six months, I would have these nightmares where I would literally wake up crying and screaming because what I was realizing I was doing is asking people to put their jobs on the line. Nobody could afford to lose their job. Nobody was working because it was pin money. They could not afford to lose their jobs. One of the things that we really began pushing for was pay equity, not just pay, not just equal pay for equal work, but equal pay for equivalent work. For example, take the difference between what a school secretary was making and a school custodian. So much of it had to do with these are men's jobs and men are breadwinners and it's physical work and that just requires a lot more effort without any, um, without any uh, value being placed on the, on the intellectual effort required for a job. So it was, it was interesting. We used it, we were successful in using it in, um, in a number of places and really managed to bring up the secretary's pay, especially in school systems where you had right there a very ready comparison that you could make. When we developed Local 925, when we founded it, when we talked about what we wanted it to be, we wanted to be an organization of member leaders. Our goal was to empower our members. They needed to find their own voice and we needed to help them find it and develop that voice. The most exciting times for me always were the times when people realized they had done this themselves. They had this strong sense of their own power and their own um, abilities and their own worth and dignity to either organize or get their first contract and, and look at each other and not look at me, but look at each other and realize they had done this together.